The Entertainer versus the Machine. Sometimes these nicknames don't really apply to these players, but I think in this particular match, there's no question that they are most appropriate. The Entertainer is this man here, Efren Reyes, one of the very few players in this game that other pool players will no clamour to go and watch because, quite simply, he sees and makes shots that others can only dream about. Jim, I know your mouth is watering at the prospect of this one. It's, uh, it's in terms of pool, it's, it's, it's a clash of cultures, isn't it? Uh, that's the coffee dripping off my lips, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> this man, Efren Reyes, is the man listed under the favourite player profile list on about 70% of all the players on the planet. He's got all the tools. And the way this main table has been breaking, if there is an Achilles heel for Efren Reyes, a lot of people think it's in the break-off. You take that out of the equation, who's better? Oliver Altman is a former world champion from Germany. At any time you've won the world championship, you gained instant credibility and respect. Last time out, he destroyed Wolverhampton's Kevin Uzel in the round of 64, having cruised through qualification. He's looked good on this table. Efren Reyes. Well, he's had no problems at all either, has he? Looked very smooth, very solid, and uh, held off the dangerous Alex Laley in the last round. Michaela Tab of Scotland will be in charge of things. I don't think she'll have any problems here. Two of the real gentlemen of the pool uh, circuit. So instantly we're going to see how this table's breaking. Wing ball down, a little bit of a cut break from Reyes. Very close as to whether or not that one passes the three into the corner pocket, but ominous signs very early for Oliver Ortman. If Reyes gets the measure of the break, this might be a very short afternoon for him. It's a mouth-watering day, isn't it, Jim? It really is. This table will see four former world champions, one after the other. Ortman, Archer, Immanen, Strickland, and then throw in the likes of Efren Reyes and Luke Salvas and uh, the local hero, Fu. I mean, it's, uh, it's just one great match after another. Well, any time you get to the business end, and Reyes a little unlucky there. He intended, if he was going to miss that, it was always going to be overcut. That would have run the one safe, but he didn't intend the cue ball cannoning into the six, and that's left an opening for Oliver Ortman. He's playing some of the best pool of his life right now. Recently moving from Munich to Hamburg, where he's putting in a lot more practice. And I can tell you, he's a very proud man. Oliver, a former team captain in the Moscone Cup, along with Moscone Cuppers Mika Immonen, Marcus Schmatt. Well, guess what? They're all wearing their Moscone Cup T-shirts. They're very proud, these players, representing Europe. And they're still here standing, fighting in Taipei to try and take that world title back to European soil. Yes, and a good spread of Europeans have uh, made the last 32, Jim. We're seeing Altman here from Germany. We've got Finns, Swedes, an Englishman, a man from Switzerland, Spain, Norway. It's, uh, they've done well. They don't call it the world champions for nothing. 42 countries represented here. Oliver a little straighter on this four than he would have liked, Nick. I don't know whether or not he can force that around. We've uh, we got movie stars in attendance. They all come out <laughs> to see these top pool players. Yeah, he's learned his fashion sense from you, clearly, Jim. Yes, he's, uh, he's not happy, is he? Double clutching on this one. Well, and the pressure of the opening rack doesn't help. And he did not want to cheat that ball into the other side. If anything, he wanted to try and kill it into the right-hand side as we look. Keep that cue ball in the middle. This is the type of shot now that Oliver will, might well have to play one of his best shots of the match to get out here. Well, he's made the pot, but 
think he's just about, you know, got the angle where he can uh, slide that one past the nine ball. He's sizing it up now. It's going to be a very, very fine shot if he can do it. It does look like it goes. Ooh. Again, if he was going to miss it, it was going to be an overcut. But Oliver knows that was a chance, and you don't get many against Stefan Reyes. He stayed pretty still. He hit that ball about as well as he could, missing it. But miss it, he did. And can the magician capitalize here? The frustration for Altman when he goes back and looks at the replay of that, he'll know that it would have gone had the shot been perfect. The error came in leaving himself straight on the four. Now, Reyes may have missed it. Oh, I'll tell you what, I wasn't too sure that one was in. I'll bet you Efren's heart skipped a beat there. Not anymore. He secures the opening rack. 1-0 in the race to nine against the 1995 world champion Oliver Ortman. Early days here in the round of 32. But the pressure is building, shot by shot, match by match, as we work our way down to crowning the 2004 world champion. A long way to go, and a lot of things can happen. We've seen in the round of 64, one player will build up a big lead. You think that's it, game over only for the other guy to get out of his chair and come storming back himself and at one nil well reyes will love the fact that he's drawn first blood but he's been around long enough to know that uh, this one's hardly started well the thing about it too is that uh, this table is breaking so easy Could you please that these players the are going to be able to string racks together with alarming regularity Case in point again, Reyes with the ball off the break, but he's not landed ideal on the two. Did I say he didn't land ideal on the two? Do you think Reyes is ready for this match? You know, in terms of degree of difficulty, that was that was right up there. And he just looked up, sized it up, and potted it as if he'd done it a hundred times before. He has done it a hundred times before, Nick. He made that look like it was hanging over the pocket. And all of a sudden, from what looked like a half a chance, Reyes has just matured it into a rack-winning possibility. Now, a rack-winning probability. A full house here, as usual. And a few very familiar faces in this crowd as well. Some of the uh, knocked-out players have decided they too are going to just grab a look at this man. Any chance you get to watch Reyes in action, you'll take it. forcing that cue ball into the side cushion. The only danger was not clearing the eight. And that accomplished. Yeah, he'll just be able to stun this one in, and bring the cue ball off the side cushion. Back out for the eight to the side. Definitely not the way that Oliver Ortman wanted to kick this match off. He had a chance to win the opening rack, and now he finds himself down 2 0. Yeah, one little miscalculation from the machine has parlayed itself into a 2 0 lead for the magician. And don't forget, in this format, its winner stays on. The way Reyes has started this match, Ortman might be spending a lot of time in that chair. Now 
One great shot on the two in that rack. Laid the foundation for victory. Every tournament he enters, he's the man to beat. There's Marcus Shamat up at the top, and it looked like Johnny Archer sat up there with him. Evan Reyes to break, leading by two racks to nil. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? Johnny Archer, a two-time former world champion, is watching this man in action. He's back on. Good spread of balls. Oh, he's got the one down as well. I think he'd rather have seen that one mm. sit up over that corner pocket. Yes, be just. But once again, he's lost the cue ball. The last place these top players want that cue ball to finish is down below the nine. Reyes generating as much power on the break as I've seen from him in a long time. was trying to get that two just tucked in behind the six and the three. Well, this won't be a shot that Oliver will be attacking because it doesn't offer any positional value. We, we rave about Reyes, Jim, and we just saw a safety shot there that didn't come off. How is his safety game? Is it, is it rock solid normally? Reyes is rock solid in every facet of the game of nine ball. He's the one they all come out to watch. They bring their notepads and pick up all the subtleties that the great Reyes brings to the table. Orman has the full distance to negotiate here. You know something, Nick? I think Oliver went for that ball. Well, I think he might have fluked it. I think he's wishing that it would have stayed yes. on the table now. That's one of those, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And what looked like a fortuitous roll now has gotten Oliver Ortman in trouble. And this, this is a really nasty one for him, isn't it? You watch where this cue ball ends up. It is bang up against that black eight. Not much room for maneuver there. Oliver obviously feeling like there was no way that he could play an offensive safety on that too, so electing the aggressive path, and it's now got him in a lot of trouble. Well, the jump shot, of course, is gone. That's a non-factor, given the proximity of the uh, cue ball and the black. So he's gonna have to go around the houses. And it doesn't matter how you slice this one up. This is a tough hit. And getting it safe, well, that just complicates the equation. This doesn't even look easy from the commentary box. Yeah, I know what you mean, Jim. Normally you can sort of sit here and think, well, you need to do this, that, and the other. Obviously executing it is uh, where the rest of us start to fall down, but you can't even see where he can execute this. And as you say, Jim, it's, it's one thing to get out of the snooker it's another thing to get safe this is a real headache for the German and that's the reason he's taken so much time but try and find an empty seat in there anywhere they were lining up hours before the matches here in the last 32 jockeying for the best seat in the house gone for distance but uh, I'm not sure he's going to be very happy with that at all. Uh, fortunately for Oliver you just can't afford any bad rolls. Not if you're going to beat Reyes. That was always the problem Jim wasn't it? It wasn't so much the contact although that wasn't exactly easy but it was what happened next. And he's uh, handed it on a silver plate to this man. Just a little short of ideal pace. But again, you'd expect him to get out from here. Nothing short of a mistake. He's going to take Reyes away from the table with the ball sitting like this. He 
we've really got a feel for Oliver Ortman. The one missed shot and the fluke there proving so costly. He hasn't done an awful lot wrong, and he's going to find himself 3-0 down. Well, at this level, Jim, we're talking about margins between victory and defeat. One misplayed safety, one loss of control of the cue ball, and you find yourself staring at a three-rack deficit. Or one bad roll, and you're absolutely right. This is where the mental toughness comes into the game. These players have to be like boxers out there. They've got to take the blows, and they have to be able to get up off the canvas, maintain a positive outlook, because you never know when Lady Luck is going to just reach down and play a card that's going to go against you. You've got to be ready both ways. And fortunes do turn. I was uh, lucky enough, Jim. I think you were tucked up in bed by this Rack time four. when uh, Yang Evan played uh, Manalo last night. I matched that finished at 2 o'clock in the morning, and Yang played six racks that were close to perfect, and you thought, my goodness me, you can see why people are talking about him as a world champion. But guess what? Manalo got back on the table, and that was the end of that. Actually, I was fortunate enough to be able to watch a bit of that, and uh, if for no other reason, because Yang was my pick for the title. But you're absolutely right. Um, you know, that was more a case of uh, not so much Yang losing as Manolo winning. Mm. So 3 nothing is not something that Altman should be sitting there feeling too depressed about. And once again, look where the cue ball ends up for the magician. A difficult long two. And he's not going to be able to get close to the three. about as good as he could have done. Kissed both balls and actually got that cue ball up table. And he's going to have to stay below the four here and play it top left. When you come into a match as a clear-cut favorite as Reyes has here, the first order of business is getting off the mark and making sure you let your opponent know who's in control. Yes, and that's proved beyond him so far. Much food for thought for Oliver Ortman. This is not a man you want to spot a four-rack lead to. Looks like it's just a little more angle than Efren would have liked. A long way to go, of course, but if Reyes wins here and his compatriot Bustamante wins his round of 32 match, those two will meet in the next round, and you'd better be here early for that one. This commentary box might be full. I was going to say, you might even have to book a seat in your own living room for that match. <laughs> It's one-way traffic here in Taiwan at the moment. The magician is waving that magic wand to good effect. And in this race tonight, he's jumped out to a four-rack lead over former champion Oliver Ortman. Uh, which is uh, quite incredible. Marlon Manalo against Francisco Bustamante. Manalo put out Yang earlier in the tournament. He's 5-1 up against Bustamante. And the winner of this match plays, well, it looks like, Manalo at the moment. So uh, Francisco Bustamante could be going out on one of the outside tables right now. But uh, Reyes going well at the moment. We can head back to the, uh, the main table right now. Jim Weish and Nick Hawley. Like I say, I'll be curious. Well, he's overhit this. Well, I wonder if Reyes is looking at a, a possible combination on that three. You know he'll have something cooked up already. The only question is what? 
Well, Ooh. he overhit the one. He left himself a little more angle because he wanted to keep that cue ball on the right-hand side of the table. So finally, a mistake. Well, you heard the uh, gasp from the audience, Jim. It wasn't a disappointment, it was a disbelief. And the time has come for Ortman. He's got to make a little hay while the sun shines right now. Well, he's got the problem with the three, but it's one he'd better solve. Well, he couldn't place the cue ball any better. This is going to be a 3-5 combination. And what's more, given that it's a full ball hit, Nick, he's going to be, be able to maintain position to that three as well. I expect Oliver to get this. I also expect him to get out from it. Yes, if he's going to get back into the match, the, this is the kind of chance he must take. Look at the look at his face. He hasn't lost his focus. He knows he's playing great. He just needed that one chance. It has arrived. And now it's down to Ortman to put pay to it. These two played a deciding rack to win a team championship in Hong Kong. A number of years ago, I ended up being there commentating that match, and I'll tell you what, Ortman was the winner when the smoke cleared in that one. And he's on the board. A four-rack deficit is not enough to frighten Oliver Ortman out of this match. Reyes has given him a chance, he's taken it, and he'll now break. And Oliver has been breaking as well as anyone. And this two from Efren. Allowing Ortman to get back at the table. Even though he spent four racks in his chair. The metal of the man shone through. Well, Ortman will be hoping Thank that you. his break That's has been it. as successful as Reyes. I can't think of Reyes by four racks to one. going for a push out or particularly difficult opening shot he's got on every time. Reyes will hope to match that. Great break off there from Oliver. Nicely onto the one. A good positional shot from the one to the two. And I feel that most of the hard work will have been done for him. Because everything else has opened up like a flower on the table. had breakfast with Ralph Suquet this morning. And even he commented on how well Oliver Ortman is playing. The two German stars know each other's games as well as their own. So Efren Reyes, if he didn't know he had a tiger by the tail today, he does now. position on that three. That's always a sign too. When you see a player that's willing to run around the table with a cue ball, they're confident in their stroke. They're confident in getting a feel for the table and letting that cue ball go. And that is always a sign that a player is in the zone. Nice angle on the five to drop onto that six. Oliver's just having a look to see if that six is frozen on that cushion. This poses no problems at all. Got good position on the six. Jim had taken one look at this break and said he'll clean up from here. No one's arguing. It's always amazing to me, too, is how these top players sight. You see, they cue so low into that white ball. Nine down, and Oliver Ortman is doing his utmost to wedge Efren Reyes right into his chair. He's taken the last two racks. If Ortman has his way, he's going to burn the memory of that missed two 
right into Reyes's memory banks for a long time to come. He was never in trouble in this clearance. And that too, a sign that a player's in pretty good nick. Well, if he could have uh, bottled that last break, it made himself a lot of money, Oliver Altman. It was near perfect. Let's see if he can replicate it here. A quick check at the stance. And he'll be doing exactly what you suggest. Oh, he's kicked the white. Now, has he been lucky with it? Looks like he's got half a chance at this one, but that cue ball got kicked by the four. He again would have been perfect, Nick. And this is a tougher one than Oliver would have liked. Look at that cue ball right into the middle of the table. It's a tough one, but as you say, Jim, makeable. And if Ortman's going to win this match, this is the kind of shot he has to make. Reyes can do nothing from his chair, but he can do a whole world of damage if he's at the table. You keep him on his backside if you can. Now, I don't think Oliver can cut this in. Takes the cue ball away from the two. This is either a bank or safety. Try and draw that cue ball back in behind the pink four. Players are always so hesitant to play safe against Reyes because he kicks better than anyone in the world. He's tempted by that cut, you know. He's had a couple of looks at it and thought better of it, but then he keeps coming back to it. No, it's it's too fine, Nick. It's far too fine of a cut. What he's looking at right now is just the path he wants that one ball to take. He wants to play safe here, and he knows it's got to be a lockup one. That's the one thing about Reyes. You try and do a little too much and try and get him in trouble to a little greater degree than you would other players, and sometimes trying to do that little extra ends up costing you the safety in the first place. It looks like Michaela Tabb's glaring at someone in the crowd. I wonder if there's a little noise that is putting Oliver off. Now, has he got that cue ball behind the four? I think he has, Nick, and I don't know how well Reyes jumps. I think we're about to find out. Jammed up against the rail. Well, he obviously isn't going for a jump cue, so if he is going to jump this, he's going to do it with his playing cue. There's a lot of distance there. Well, so he's working out the permutations. For years, all the Filipino stars were renowned as the best kickers in the world simply because they didn't play jump shots. Now a lot of them have started playing jump shots with a playing cue, with a jump cue. We're going to find out right here. No, he's kicking at this off two cushions. Uh-oh. Ball shot, ball in hand. The mistake arrives for Ortman. And Efren with the long, lonely walk back to the chair. That was just how good the safety was. Well, ball in hand and a good spread of balls around the table. That lead is about to be reduced a little bit more. can only wonder, had he not missed that one ball in the opening rack, allowed Reyes to slot four on his side of the score sheet, what would the score be? Because Oliver just doesn't look like missing. Not been phased at all, has he? And again, as you said, your mental toughness, definitely one of the key elements in his game. And never in question with him, Nick. I've seen Oliver play as much as anybody in Moscone Cups. 
in the top European events. And I'll tell you what, this guy comes to play every time that cue comes out of its case. The biggest thing any pool player can strive for is not to beat themselves. And the man at the table epitomizes that. That's a little short of ideal position. You'd really expect him to still get this and clear up, but it's a little tougher than it could have been. And playing that eight, do a little bit of a blind pocket. And by that, I mean he's looking away from the pocket. Dead on the money. Look at that position. The stride of a very confident player. And a player that is now only one rack adrift in this match. 4-3, Efren Reyes still leads, but Oliver Ortman is on the comeback trail. He'll be breaking in rack number eight. And we've already seen how well he is breaking. This one promised to be a photo finish and it is living up to all expectations from these four, two former world champions. We said, Jim, when Reyes was 4 nothing up, we said, you know, d d don't leave now. There's, you know, there's no question that Ortman will come back if he gets one chance. And momentum is now entirely with him. Well, Reyes may well be able to weather the storm simply because of the 4-0 lead that he built up. Thank you, but Oliver Ortman Oliver is back Ortman's in this match, Rocket. rest Shining assured. Back on, that cue ball's dead center, and that, I think, oh no, there may be a, a little problem there. He's got a couple of problems, I think, yes. You know it from that reaction. A, he's got the uh, nine ball a bit near the cue ball, and B, that pink four has uh, made itself a little bit unwelcome. Well, Oliver upset because he knows he nailed that break. And that four ball was the only ball that could come and haunt him. Well, look at where the cue ball is. I mean, you'd take that every time, wouldn't you? Again, that's all you strive for. He may be going at this. That's what he's looking at. The reason being the three is in the same area of the table. If he gets it off that cushion, he's going to land on the three. And that's why Oliver is even considering kicking at this. Because the push out is the option. And Oliver obviously feels like he's regained the initiative in this match and he's unwilling to relinquish it, not without a shout. He does have the option of a push out here off the break, but I think he'd be a bit unwilling to take that one in this situation. When you get a ball that finishes close to a pocket, Nick, it really limits the areas that you can push into. And like I say, the fact that the three is right there, well, it may be a gamble worth taking. You gotta tip your hat. Takes a lot of guts to play a shot like that. And I don't think there's any pool player that has ever opposed Oliver Ortman that would accuse him of being a coward. Thin cut on the three. Just wants to take the cue ball back out to the middle of the table. And if that thing puts its brakes on, and it just about did, 
then the hard work is done. And what an opening shot from Ortman. He's been coming in under the radar in this event. Very few people have been talking about the machine. But I'll tell you what, if he takes Reyes out of the equation, he'll open a few eyes. Yeah, that'll set the alarm bells going off. And while you're on that subject, Jim, as Reyes looks on and uh, wonders when he's going to get back, Torsten Homan, nobody's really talked about him, and I think the expectation was, well, people so rarely defend their title, he can't get it back. Well, he's played pretty well so far as well. Well, Nick, you're exactly right. That's the only reason they haven't said anything about Torsten is simply because he's the holder. And it's that tough to defend this title. But you have to have been there to know what it takes to get back to the top of the mountain again. And both of these players have been there. Chalk in hand. And he's a little straighter than he would have liked, and that cue ball finished a little closer to that cushion. So again, positional options are a little limited here for Oliver. And he may elect just to roll this in and play that seven up to one of the top corner pockets. Depends how he feels and whether he's got the angle to get on top of it. Oh, yeah, he had plenty of angle. Had to miss the eight. Well, he might have wished he would have taken my advice, kept it simple. And you can see uh, confirmation of that 6-3 uh, lead now for Manalo. The man who uh, put out Yang and the man who will play Perhaps the winner of this match, Huang and uh, Rico Dix. Dix uh, trailing 5-4 at the moment. And uh, Al-Qaeda, confirmation of that 6-4 uh, of a quo of uh, Taipei. So, a lot of people looking at uh, the outside tables. We're concentrating our efforts on the main table there. Let's head back to commentary. Uh, Jim Weish. And Nick Hawley. Okay, Oliver. Efren just having a little look at the Thank table there, checking nine. everything's all right. Oliver Ortman but Oliver to heading Four back to break. Okay, the machine will be winding it up here, rack number nine of a scheduled 19. Make that 18. It's a race to nine. Yeah, make that 17. I'll get the math right. I don't want to have to take my <laughs> shoes and socks off. Best of 17. And Ortman, as he's done here from the outset, when he's had control of the break, he's brought it home. And look at the way they've sat up for him here. Well, the only possible problem, as he just gets a nice little bounce off the jaw there, is right smack in the middle of the table with a three and seven, and that's what he's looking at now. They've snuggled up a little bit tight. Yeah, that doesn't look like an issue at all. I think Oliver's just settling himself wants to get back into the focus and he brings that cue ball back out the middle of the table that three is going to be available to the bottom right corner so this is nothing more than just trying to resettle your nerves he's had a bit of a break and now just bump this two in just a very little bit of check side and back to the middle of the table perfectly on the three and if he nails this without, uh, well, Ortman, of course, this match is level, but I mean, if Ortman were to take this rack as we expect, he'd have his first lead of the match. Didn't want contact there. He tried to get between those two. And so for the first time in a long while, a mistake and Efren Reyes with a glimmer of hope. He just sat up in his chair when he heard that contact, you know. Outside chance at a bank here. Very tough. He was queuing up at that. So he was going to be trying to cut it in. 
I can't imagine him trying to slice that in the corner, not from that angle. is down. He's not on the one. That one caught the jaw of the side pocket. And Oliver knows. Just having a look at how they finish here. I just want to be sure before I make this statement because you just never know with Ortman. But I've got a feeling that he's going to be playing safe here. There's no way he'll be attacking from this position. And the nine over on the right-hand side presents a combination from the four ball. I think you're going to see Oliver look to duck here, Nick. No options at all. Yeah, and a lot of bolt holes to hide in. You can see that six ball takes the bank shot away. Just strikes me, Jim, that you think that so much of pool is, is, is about potting and making the shot, but the more you watch these top guys, it's about more about correct mental decision making when to go for it when to hold when to play safe nick that's the key in any q sport understanding the percent the percentages of when to attack when to defend and also it's a game of feeling knowing what's right in your heart understanding your ability and being able to put your best foot forward these are all how the winners can take it across the finish line but maintaining that focus under pressure is what it's all about. Push out. Well, he's electing the push out here. And I uh, got to say, I don't understand that because he's got the same line. He's just rolled that cue ball a little further away. The shot doesn't change. So if I'm Efren Reyes, I'm thinking if he didn't like it the first time, why wouldn't he keep like him, it this time? Keep him there. His problem. Reyes didn't waste much time in saying no. Nope. Oliver, your problem, not mine. Yeah, the only shot I see here, and Oliver was looking at it. It's about a quarter ball hit on the one. He's going to dig into the cue ball a little with a lot of right hand spin and swing it off the two cushions, taking the cue ball up towards the top right hand pocket. Trying to lay that one ball over behind one of those colors. I think what's bothering Oliver with this shot is he knows if he doesn't hide the one, good chance he's going to leave it. Well, he may have changed his mind. He just got up. He did. Look. Look oh, at this. Boy. He just peeked almost as though he wasn't sure whether or not he was going to take it on. He gathered his concentration, mounted his courage, and that shot is the shot of the match thus far. Without question. Because just look where he left himself. Right on top of the two. Now swing the cue ball back over the right-hand side of the table for the 4-9 combination. And this has to be like a nail through Reyes's coffin. How many players can say they just outfoxed Reyes? There's no doubt about it that it's Oliver Ortman in the Fox's role right now. His 4 9 could have been a lot easier if he left that cue ball in the middle of the table. But what? it's, sorry, Nick, it's very missable from where that white's finished. It is. But if he nails this, I wonder what that will do to the confidence of Reyes having passed on that shot and then seeing Ortman come up and nail it. Listen, I'll tell you what, Reyes is already doubting it because Ortman's shown him that he can outmaneuver him. So that bit of doubt, that seed has already been planted. So Reyes sat and suffering, but momentum turns quickly in this match. If Ortman misses this, it'll swing back. 
So Altman has done the hard work. Can he finish the job? There's your answer. An awesome display. Oliver Ortman, the 95 world champion, has raced out six in a row, now leading Reyes six racks to four. Day six, the Taiwan World Pool Championship. Straight knockout, last 32. Oliver Ortman, 6-4 up against Reyes at the World Trade Center. Let's head back to commentary. Jim Weish, Nick Halling. Oliver Ortman has won the last six racks. And he's on again, but again that one's caught the jaw. It's an almost identical situation to last time. And he is frustrated. You watch the one here, hits the jaw and heads south, and immediately the push out has been called for because he can't even get a clean look at it because the blue ball is sat there. I wonder if Efren Reyes will take a little longer look at where Oliver lays the cue ball this time. But guaranteed he's going to be pushing. He can't hit that one. Just dangled some bait in front of Reyes there. Now this fellow needs to find a shot, doesn't he? Six racks in a row. He's just basically sat in his chair and watched Ortman go to work. The full length of the table, object ball and cue ball on opposite rails. You just knew he was going to take a little more time with this one, Nick. Well, Jim, it's been so long since he's taken a shot. I'm happy Reyes is going to shoot this. I think, I think it's the right decision, even if he leaves it. He's not. He's put Ortman back in. Did he want it and think better of it or was there a little bit of uh, psychology going on there I wonder I think a bit of both I think he just played a little game of poker with Ortman he wanted Oliver to think wonder and he wanted to put him in his chair for a little while but also I think as you say I think he wanted it as well just because he's he's not had a shot to make but he's thought better of it I just felt better with Reyes shooting it I mean, obviously, there's nothing easy about getting this safe. But it's been so long since he's been at the table and struck that white. But if Oliver had a plan, he better come up with the goods right here. The only shot I see is just trying to bank that one, just about a dead on hit, and trying to leave that cue ball in behind the colors. This shot is fraught with danger, Nick. I think I'm starting to understand a little more why Reyes refused it, even though he took so long in doing so. Now, where's it all going to end up? And that is disastrous for Oliver Orman. He went for that. Tried to snick that one into the corner pocket. And the time has arrived for the magician. And you don't think we're going to see the measure of the man now? He's been in his chair for six racks. If he can come to the table and clear up from here, he'll have answered every critic. And that's not to say that there are any critics with Reyes. Well, it's turning into another one of those matches that we've seen in the sudden death format that 
players have been on top and utterly dominant, but you try and keep that momentum all the way through the match, it's just not possible. You have to really just go with the ebb and flow of a contest. It was all Reyes, then Ortman could do no wrong. And now, suddenly, Reyes is back with the initiative. He's still got a little housekeeping to do here, though. Just kill the speed of the cue ball. And the big shot now from the seven to the eight. He's going to have to play this with a lot of speed. And any time you hit a ball as hard as he's going to have to hit this one, the pockets shrink up. What a shot from Reyes there. Wow. That one would be on a highlight reel. So Efren Reyes gets himself back into the match on the main number one table. What about the other big name in Filipino pool? Bustamante is up against his compatriot, Manon Manalo, and he is on the edge of elimination. Manalo has already claimed one big name last night in Yang. Is another one about to fall to him? He's 8-5 up. Yes, what a day it would be if both these two Filipino superstars we're sent back. I mean, who would have possibly thought that? Manolo, we know. Tremendous young player. Put Yang out last night, 9-7. A quick look at the rack, and he's going to be breaking for the win there on table two against a man that many thought would go one step further than he did a few years ago when he finished runner-up to Earl Strickland, Francisco Bustamante. A big break here. Bustamante might well be unscrewing his cue. He's on. And that cue ball is going upstairs, top right. It's hung on. <gasps> My goodness me. Well, that's probably the story of that match as far as Francisco is concerned. It's been a game of millimeters. That cue ball could just as e easily have dropped into that corner pocket. And with ball in hand, you would have expected Francisco to get back at the table, clear up, and get to 8-6 breaking in every bit in the match. Look at it. Looks like it's half down, that white. You know, when you see these Philippine stars, they're so calm and relaxed at the table. It's like they're born with a cue in their hand. Incredibly confident. And this fellow, Manalo, watching him last night, he, once he'd made an early mistake, and that mistake led to him being 6-2 down, he regrouped so well. He's gone for the tall grass there. Yeah, he's keeping the screws down on Bustamante. He knows he has to. He can ill afford give the great one a chance. Now he's going to jump, is he? Now where, where's it going to end up? This is critical for Bustamante. And that's trouble. With a capital T. A guilt-edged opportunity now for Marlon Manolo to move into the round of the last 16 and take the biggest scalp, arguably, of his career, certainly in an event of this nature. Well, he had to qualify to compete here in Taipei this year, and he was unhappy about that. We talked about this last night as uh, Bustamante looks on and the sands of time start to trickle away for him. He was aggrieved that he had to go through qualifying this year. And he seems to have used that to positive effect because he's come out and been absolutely sensational. I'll tell you what, Jim, if he wins this match, he won't be qualifying next year. You reach the last 16, you're automatically guaranteed an appearance next year. No, you're absolutely right, Nick. 
but sometimes, as you say, you can use that and convert it into positive energy as though you've got something to prove. And Manolo right now is the man on the precipice of a huge victory. Nice position to the three. You can see he just wants to feather the cue ball back out towards the center of the table. And Bustamante can do nothing but watch and hope for a chance. Isn't it funny? An hour, an hour ago, we were talking about the possibility tomorrow of a great matchup between the two big Filipino superstars, Bustamante and Reyes. One is on his way out, and the other is in the most almighty dogfight. Yes, just to remind you, the score here, 8-5. In favor of the man at the table, Marlon Monolo. And that's over Bustamante. And you can see that everything is there. Just a matter of holding his nerve. But he looks like there's ice water running through those veins. Just checking his options after this next shot. Well, wow. he was the... Uh, the last man standing last night at 2 a.m., he finished on the TV table. You mean uh, apart from the caretaker? <laughs> he closed up when he left. And he's the first guy in today. It doesn't matter whether he goes on early or late. This fella is at home here in Taipei. He's got a real full stretch for this one. It's gone. He's got position. And Bustamante's challenge is over. It looks it. He'd had a disappointing, by his very high standard, San Miguel Asian Tour Bustamante, Jim. And that's carried over into the World Championship as well. The last 32 is not where Bustamante expected to be checking out of this tournament. No, I don't think anyone expected this result. This Manolo is some kind of player, and obviously on a mission. You beat one big name, maybe you're a, a fluke. You beat two, you're the real thing. That's exactly what this man has done now. Last night, Yang. Today, Bustamante. Marlon Manalo has definitely guaranteed that he will be playing in next year's World Championship by reaching round four, where he will meet the winner of Efren Reyes and Oliver Ortman. We'll return to that match when we return for more action here in Taiwan. Pool, Taipei, Taiwan style. The rainy season, but uh, who's reigning at the World Pool Championship? Well, I can tell you that Chen Che Wang from Taipei has beaten Rico Dix. Wang will now play the winner of Pagalion and Kempter. That's a little bit later on. Let's head back to the main table. Come and say, Nick Holling, Jim Wash. House remains full for this absorbing battle between these two big powerhouses. Reyes won the first four ranks. Ortman stormed back and took the next six. Then the magician came back to the table and wouldn't you know it, he's run out the last three. He's within two racks of a place in the next round. Yes, Nick, I've been keeping an eye on that match while we were also updating what was going on outside. And I can tell you there were a couple battles here a couple safety battles that ensued. This time, Reyes, to break. Reyes came out on top. To He's won the last three racks and breaks here at 7-6. He has reestablished his authority on this one. Can he carry it home? Well, look into the stars. A little celestial intervention possibly on cue for Reyes because even though he got a ball off the break. He's not going to be happy where these have come to rest because that cue ball does not have a clear path to the one. And as I said, 
earlier in this match when the low ball remains near a pocket the push out very tough now I wonder if Reyes is just pushing out here possibly to leave a kick well it's Altman's conundrum to solve isn't it well Oliver knows as well as anybody that Reyes kicks better than anybody on the planet. So he may not give this back to Reyes, even though it's a full ball snooker. I'll tell you one thing, Nick, there's no way I'd let Reyes shoot this. Well, Altman knows that. But as you say, Jim, you're watching the last rack and uh... They had quite a little safety duel on this one ball, didn't they? And it was uh, it was Ortman that blinked first. He made the mistake. He can't afford another one. Now, what's he going to do? What can he find? He's played that well. So he's called the bet. Ray has put his money in the middle, and Oliver Ortman is called. A great reply from Ortman there. And this is considerably tougher. The, the jump cue. Yep, yeah, the aerial route has been taken. But the ball is not going to go. And where is it going now? Is he going to get away with it? I don't think he has. I don't think he has either. I think the only reason Reyes went at that is he may have gone after the nine. That nine was in very close proximity to the one, but look at how it sat up for Ortman now. So this exchange, again, won by the machine. And the tie turns again, Jim. The peaks and valleys of the World Championship very much on display. Well, it's Altman that's in the box seat now. If he can clean up here, and there's still some work to do, as you can see, a lot of work to do. That's Reyes's chalk at the table. And Oliver has just slid it away, and Reyes has come and picked it up. He's got a perfect angle on this, too just can concentrate on the pocket. <coughs> the natural angle is going to swing the cue ball off the two cushions, back down for the three over the bottom right. A full-blooded attempt here. Pot. Can he get the angle? Oh, look at that. Perfect. And he's got the angle on the three as well. Another look. Off those two cushions and back down for the three. And as I said, the angle is perfect. All he's got to do is roll this in. Cheers from the outside tables, obviously more results. When they come to us, we'll keep you updated. But right now, it's the long five for Ortman. Oh my goodness. Is that the moment this match was lost? That five did everything except dive. And you know something, Nick? I guarantee you that'll be one or that Oliver Ortman's going to remember for a long time, win or lose. This time it's Ortman's chalk that's at the other end of the table, but this fella is seeing that pocket big.
What on earth happened to Oliver Ortman there? It's like hitting a double fault at break point down. It was almost like he was in cruise control, and it was all happening so automatically that he just got up and never gave the shot that second look that it may have needed, given the relevance of the situation. But it's Reyes depositing the nine. I don't think there will be any sympathy cards headed to Germany from the Philippines on this instance. 8-6. Reyes wants one more for a place in the last 16. Meanwhile, let's have a look at what's happening on the outside table. Al-Qaeda and Quo, we're in action. You heard the huge roar just a few minutes ago. So I think you've probably worked out already what's happened here. Quo in a hill-hill battle. Seems to have held his nerve the best. Here's the first big cheer coming up. the roof. They keep on coming, these Chinese Taipei players. Kuo Po Cheng through to the round four. He may face his compatriot Fu Che Wei, although Earl Strickland will have other thoughts on that issue. Meanwhile, back here, on the hill, Efren Reyes, and the last shot that Ortman has played in this championship could be a horrible miss if Reyes gets on here and gets position and he's got one down where's it where's that one ball going and I think I think he can just see a bit of it but whether he can put it down or not is another question I don't know judging by his reaction I'm not so sure it certainly looks like it might be in the open neck So much happening here at the World Trade Center. We're trying to keep you abreast of all the proceedings. He could see it. And he can see the finish line. This could be the beginning of the end of Oliver Ortman's run in this year's event. If Reyes can hold it together, A massive let off, it's fair to say. Well, so far, Jim, this is shaping up to be disaster day for the Europeans. We've seen Dix gone on table three from the Netherlands. Al Qaeda from Spain on table four has just gone. And Ortman from Germany about to head out the door as well. Somebody sitting not a million miles away from me predict that there would be no Europeans in the final four? And a hush fell over the commentary <laughs> box. <laughs> Reyes is perfect. He's got ideal position on the four with plenty of angle. I think the next time that Oliver Ortman comes out of his chair, Nick, it's going to be to congratulate Reyes. He had his chances. He knows he had his chances. And he'll have to dwell on that missed five for a full 12 months. Just sneaked it in. Yes, one catastrophic miss from Oliver Ortman. That's all he needed. There's a limit to how many shocks a nation can take. Losing Bustamante 20 minutes ago was bad enough. The Philippines could not have withstood Reyes going out. It's not going to happen. Not today. Reyes will live on. The nine deposited. The magician escapes another trap. A 9-6 win, and he knows it. Over former world champion Oliver Wartman, he's through to the last 16 where he will face Marlon Manolo.